everyone, my name is Sophie Ash and I'm the host of our COVID-19 video series. Today's guest is Janice Rosler. She's a board certified sex therapist, licensed marriage and family therapist and author of numerous books on sex and relationships. Hi Janice, how are you? Hi Sophie, I think I'm like everybody else. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> hanging in there. I'm home and uh, but I'm doing well. So thank goodness. I hope everyone listening is doing well too. Thank you. Yes, it's definitely a big change for a lot of people. Um, So I would love for you to tell our listeners a bit about your background, your credentials, and what it is that you do. Well, I wear a lot of hats. Um, So, but first I'll start out with what I'm doing now. I, as you mentioned, I'm a board certified sex therapist, a licensed marriage and family therapist. So I see clients, but now we've switched to online, used to see them in person. I write and speak primarily about relationships, but also since I have a specialty in diabetes, I began my career as a registered dietitian, moved into that. So I write a lot about diabetes related sexual complications. So I focused on relationships, how chronic medical issues affect relationships and how stresses relate. Uh, affect relationships. So this is kind of something that I've uh, visited numerous times. I know this, the COVID situation is very unusual for all of us, but it still brings stresses that can come from a variety of places. Stress happens. Um, What I do, as I said, I'm doing research. I'm about to get my PhD. That's happening soon. So I'll be Dr. Janice soon. And uh, yes, I'm going to make my husband call me Dr. Janice. For sure. <laughs> For sure. We're not just going to role play doctor in the bedroom. I will be doctor. Really. Doctor. But he, he's also a physician. So we'll be doctor and doctor. Um, but yeah, so that's what I've been doing. And I've really kind of dedicated my professional career to this piece because what I find is that when uh, people have chronic issues, stress, big things in their lives, if their relationship isn't loving, if there's problems in the bedroom, if their relationship is stressed, it's really hard to turn to your partner for support. Mm-hmm. So I see that with taking care of diabetes, because you always say you're, you know, the, uh, you want your partner to help support your choices and all that, and and your lifestyle needs. But even so, with this, it's really hard if you're absolutely angry at them, and mm-hmm. they're the person you need to help run the house. Um, uh, you know, deal with financial challenges that are happening to so many families and to deal with having children come in and out of your bedroom because they're scared and they're having nightmares about what's going on and just having a lot of people sitting on your head. We usually have space. We usually have personal space Mm -hmm. and, you know, a little bit of time to ourselves. And for many people, that time just doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. So it's really impacting our most important relationship, and that's our intimate partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I was just about to ask you, um, what are some of the COVID-specific challenges that people are facing right now? So you mentioned a couple of them, like having less personal space, having kids around. Um, What other things have you been hearing about or, or seeing in your practice? Well, I'm dealing with clients who have been let go from their jobs. So there's financial stresses. And with that comes the notion of personal failure, which really is not fair because uh, a lot of people are questioning, why was I let go and somebody else wasn't? So then you come to that personal piece. Uh, Also, if you felt that your employer was fair and dealt with you honestly, and uh, all of a sudden, you there's this mismanagement, and there's this lying. I'm dealing with uh, a client involved with the cruise lines, and that's been so mismanaged, and it's been a shock to know that people that they've loved and cared about and respected in the workplace are now acting in a way that they never expected, uh, without kindness, without um, empathy. So that's one piece. In terms of of family life and relationships, all of a sudden there's shared tasks. We're home all the time, as you mentioned. But what do we do? You know, up until this point, a lot of the housework 
was kind of, um, uh, we, we kind of took our roles. Uh, not everyone has based on sex roles. You didn't have the woman cleaning and the husband, you know, uh, going out and bringing home the bacon, as they say. But certain, you know, certain uh, one partner would be making the beds. One partner did the laundry. I mean, there was a routine people had. All of a sudden, they're home all the time. So mm-hmm. there's a renegotiation. If you're home and you're not working, help me more. Don't just sit on the couch and read and put your feet up and, you know, watch the next neck, you know, neck Netflix type of series. So there's renegotiating um, chores. There's renegotiating how you interact with your children. If one individual was the one who dealt more with discipline and managing the kids and the other really was the more, you know, come home late, got all the hugs and kisses. All of a sudden, you're both home and you need to be on the same page yeah. because then the children are, you know, one one will give you everything you want and the other one punishes you. So, there, you know, it's a whole, there's so much upheaval. Another thing is the whole notion of cooking. A lot of people went out a lot. So for some people, there's a lot of pressure about food preparation. Mm-hmm. And spending a lot of time on recipes that the family won't eat, or buying the wrong things, or having what do you what do you make out of what you can get because you can't get other things? Yeah. Uh, also, you know, a lot. There's financial pressures. Um, I I have someone who's become a shopping. Um, I shouldn't say addict because that hasn't been determined. Addiction is a serious type of diagnosis, but. That's what she stated. She said for, to release the pressure, she is maxing out their credit cards, buying tons of stuff online. Because when mm-hmm. she feels nervous, that's what she's doing. And that brings stress to her relationship because she's never spent money like that before. Mm-hmm. So now they're arguing over money. Uh, uh, her partner's job shifted. Uh, there's less money coming in and she's there's more money going out. So everyone's in upheaval. Um, and no one knows what's going to happen next. What is the new normal? Uh, and also there's a bit of one thing that, that can be very toxic to a relationship is when one partner becomes a parent to the other. And we see that a lot in diabetes where maybe, uh, the, uh, you know, heterosexual couple, the wife might say, you know, you're supposed to be eating this or you can't eat that, or you're supposed to be testing your blood and you become that nagging parent. Well, we have this also going on a little bit. Um, If you don't want to wear a mask, if you do want to wear a mask, if you aren't being careful, did you wash your hands? Did you wash them long enough? Did you sing the song? You know, there's a bit of parental stuff going on in couples Mm -hmm. and concern, don't touch me until you change your clothes. Um, And so, again, once you get into that parent-child relationship, it is so hard to then become partners in the bedroom Mm -hmm. because you're angry that they're not following the guidelines, or maybe you, uh, you know, another thing, throw it in. Let's, let's throw everything in. Maybe you're on different political sides. Mm -hmm. Maybe one of you is supporting one perspective while the other is supporting a different perspective and now you're fighting. So a lot, a lot's going on. Definitely a lot. Yeah. Um, So in the second half of the discussion, I'd love to focus on some practical recommendations um, from you, uh, any resources, any tips, things that people can do to, to overcome these challenges. What have you got? Well, (laughs) well, you know what, the one thing that I wanted to share, our, our sex lives, especially if we're home all day, we have relatives who may have moved in with us. We have children, as I said, who are now sleeping in our bed because they're scared or sleeping on the floor or the knocking on the door. Uh, I, I wanted to share that there are other ways to connect because connecting, making an effort to connect is, is so important. And mm-hmm. there's eight types of intimacy. We, when we think of intimacy, we usually think of the physical only, of how often do we have sex? And when we have sex, is it meaningful? Do we communicate? That's a huge piece, no doubt. But there are other ways to connect. And if you can choose to do at least one of these ways with your partner, and your partner can choose as well, it can help 
nourish that relationship. And it isn't just for COVID, it's for any time. So I wanted to go through the eight types. Uh, the first one is affection, which is not uh, non-sexual affection. What I mean is when they walk in the door, of course, after they wash their hands and, uh, you know, clean themselves up, giving a hug, giving a kiss, giving, uh, if they're watching TV, pass by and give them a quick back massage. Um, Hold hands when you're watching TV or sit close together. Give a little peck on the cheek. The the small physical things, even giving a hug, uh, not what I consider a non-sexual hug, but a relaxation hug. There's actual research that if you hug and hold each other until you both feel, ah, that kind of relaxation, you're, you're passing the tension back and forth and releasing. And not only is that good for you, and it releases a lot of positive hormones, nurturing hormones, it's, it's um, bonding for the relationship. So affection, but not, but not sexual, saying, you know, uh, doing those things. Um, also saying things, I love you, thank you. Um, uh, you know, we, we tend to take our, the people we live with, we tend to take them for granted. So this would be affection were in terms of verbal, Thank everyone. Everyone's got a hard go. There's nothing, you know, the expectations. If your partner makes the bed for the first time ever, thank, thank him or her or he or she or whatever they call themselves. Um, really, you know, don't don't be shy about the verbal. Um, I love you. I'm so glad that if I have to be with someone, you're the one. Show it, say it, and do it. Also, we've got the aesthetic. And this is another way to connect. Aesthetics is when you share something beautiful together. And uh, one thing that I've been doing with my husband is we've been going on YouTube every evening. And we've been watching documentaries about artists. And uh, we just, we're just picking artists out of the air. You know, Monet, Manet, you name it. And the stories are fabulous. But we get to see these works of art that we can share together and talk about how beautiful they are. Or if you're walking, point out a beautiful flower, tree, work of architecture. In other words, you're sharing something together. You can also sit and watch the sunrise or sunset together. And you can do that with a glass of wine. These are all free things, ways to connect. So enjoying aesthetics. Spiritual. That's another one. Now, spiritual, for many people, their spiritual centers have closed. Churches and synagogues are closed. Um, mosques are closed. We're not going to places where we would normally have our spiritual connection and community. But you can connect spiritually with your partner. You can pray together. You can meditate at the same time together. You can choose a topic that has spiritual meaning for you and discuss it. You can read a prayer together. Um, so adding that, touching, making that a touchstone, something uh, you can both do. Uh, intellectual, if you share political views, I don't want you to get into a fight, but you can talk about an article in the newspaper, an article online. One thing my husband and I have been doing is we play Jeopardy on Alexa. So that keeps our brains working. We laugh when we get it. We laugh when we don't get it. And we connect. In other words, we're having a date, but it's an intellectual date. And that's a lot of fun, too. Um, uh, also, in terms of going back to aesthetic, one th another thing you can do with Alexa is play music and listen to that together. That's fun. Uh, social. I know we're not going out right now with double dating or even going to the movies or having dates ourselves. But you can have a Zoom date. You can get together and connect with family together, not just you alone, but do it as a couple. You can um, send each other texts. You can um, just, you know, just really trying to create a date, set aside a date, set aside a time. Maybe it's after the kids are asleep or maybe uh, decide that tonight you're going to be watching a movie together and choose the movie. In other words, do something social together and plan it. Um, emotional sharing your feelings. This is a tough time. We have a lot we're holding in. We have a lot of frustration, anger, um, maybe gratitude. There are many of us who are, are so grateful that we haven't, been, we haven't caught it, um, grateful that our family members are healthy or distressed that family members or others we love uh, have, 
had problems with the, with this um, infection with this virus. So talking about your emotions and also in terms of uh, any anger that you have toward each other. If you have a partner who is leaving their dishes all around, leaving their cups all around, leaving their socks on the floor, because the routine has shifted, you may have a lot of anger that you're the one picking up. So what you can do is use this formula. It's called I language. I language is where you focus exclusively on your feelings and your needs instead of attacking with what we call you language which is when you say you didn't pick up and why do you keep doing this? Because people get defensive and that generally usually explodes into a huge fight where you're just not going to hear each other and it's just going to get out of control. Mm -hmm. So the you, the I language formula is I feel, and then you fill in the blank with an emotion. I feel blank when blank, what I need is blank. So if we look to the dishes and the cleaning, for example, I feel stressed or overwhelmed or uh, fatigued or whatever. I feel stressed when I look around our apartment and see clothes, dishes, whatever. What I need is for everyone to take 10 minutes and just help clean up. And so this way you're not blaming you're not pointing out anyone in particular, but you're sharing how you feel and what your needs are. And when you share your feelings, the person hearing it is more likely to be empathetic, to, to feel uh, connected and to, and to want to do something. Whereas, as I said, using the you language, why are you guys making this mess? I can't take it anymore. Uh, they're more likely to say, well you know, scream and go to their rooms yeah. and nothing gets done. Um, finally, we've got sexual. You've got to make a date. This is the craziest time. Set a time for intimacy. It could be at an unusual time. It could be when the kids are go after the kids are asleep. It could be early in the morning before they wake up. Uh, it could be that you, when they're busy watching a movie, you grab a quickie in the bathroom, you know, if things are going to be different, but make time for sexual activity and realize one thing that I love is there's this doctor named Rosemary Bassan, who in 2000 came out with a lot of research about women. And I love the fact that she focused on the fact that women can have a, a wonderful time during sex, even if they don't have an orgasm. With men, we have that kind of climax, plateau, orgasm, boom, you know, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, whatever. And, and that's really what they're focused on is that, that orgasmic release. But women can connect sexually when they're turned on. They can connect if they're not turned on and just choose to be nurturing and choose to be loving. They can, they can enjoy it because of cuddling. They can enjoy it because they do have an orgasm. They can enjoy just the being. And, and so accepting that your needs may be different, accepting that your world may be different, um, just having a quick cuddle, quick makeout session in the car, quick makeout session in the bathroom, and just knowing that you still are attracted to each other, that you still love each other. And that can really help be another connector. So those are really the categories of connecting that I would like to encourage people to, to you know, use every day Thank if you. possible as many <laughs> they were amazing and we are perfectly on time um I particularly okay. love the intellectual date because as a nerdy type myself I would <laughs> really enjoy that kind of date um yeah and I think you made a lot of great tips about communication about respect about appreciation for each other um and and recognizing that the roles around the house are changing um, it, it was really, really interesting and I can't wait to share it with our followers. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you for having me. I, I hope everyone will stay safe and I hope that this resolves soon and I wish everyone good health. Thank you for having me. <laughs>